Did you know you can do your tithing and love offering right from your computer? Visit www.pastorgregyoung.org to support Chosen Generation and make a tax-deductible donation. Now, back to Chosen Generation with Pastor Greg. And welcome back to Chosen Generation Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Greg. My next topic, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, is probably one of the hottest topics, uh, at least uh, within the church, and certainly has been within our culture. Uh, in you know, it, it continues to be, and it is also in in this pastor's humble opinion, uh, probably the most destructive moral issue that is that is a part of the church. Uh, and I know uh, that folks will say, well, pastor, what about abortion? Yes, murdering babies is, <laughs> is bad. But the difference between this next topic and, and abortion and the killing of infants is this act is done at the altar in the church. I want you to think about that. At the altar in the church. And, of course, I'm talking about the LGBTQ agenda, and there is an agenda. I welcome to the program George Carniel, Jr. George is a former homosexual, and he has written a book, and it is entitled From Queer to Christ, From Queer to Christ. And he outlines the life that he lived as a homosexual. Uh, I promise we're not going to break any laws here. We're not going to uh, we're not going to violate any uh, FCC code, uh, but we are going to give you a, a good picture of what this Pride Month is really all about. George, welcome. Good to have you. Thanks, Greg, for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, George, and and you've been here before, and I appreciate that, George. You and I connected through uh, I think Facebook, as a matter of fact and uh, have gotten to know each other and become friends and brothers in Christ, and it's great to have you on board today. George, how yeah. how long were you in the homosexual lifestyle? For 25 years. And uh, at, at what age did you start? 18. And talk to me a little bit about that lifestyle, and then I want to transition that into folks understanding uh, the real truth about pride. So talk to me about that, and what was that like? I think I was just saying in a nutshell, I want Christians to understand why so many individuals go into that life are really people who are broken and hurting. There's a disconnect somewhere in so many individuals who have suffered some childhood shame, rape, rejection, trauma, physical, verbal, mental, emotional abuse. There are a number of reasons why we all act out differently. And for those who move into the LGBT lifestyle, at least when I went into the club, it is a, a very addicting life because I was finally getting what I was craving as a child, and that was male bonding, which really led to a sex addiction. And the community is just fraught with many issues from pornography to drugs and alcohol and, and promiscuity. So within three years of that life, I was so innocent when I walked in, but three years of that life, I had a sex addiction, and I was battling drugs and alcohol, and I became a prostitute, and I was depressed and just suicidal all of the time and did attempt suicide, and it would still be 22 more years before I got out of that life. But I want Christians to understand what you're seeing in the media is not the reality of that life. And there are so many people hurting in that life. And I really hope to encourage people today to stop supporting this agenda and to push back against the agenda, because at the end of the day, every individual who walks into that life, they're not going to find any peace or contentment. George, when you when you talk about this and share with people, you know, it reminds me a lot about these stories, and I think it's Walt Heyer has written a book uh, about the transgender. He was he was transgender, and he has written a book and collected stories, and there are thousands and thousands now of young people that are in their early 20s, mid-20s, late 20s coming out and talking about how the counselors suggested if you just change your sexual identity, that's going to fix all your problems and the mutilation of their bodies. And they are screaming as loud as they can, please don't do this and stop counseling people and encouraging young people in this behavior 
because five, ten years down the road, when they realize that that doesn't fix anything and that the underlying issues are never even touched, they're going to be, as you became, suicidal. Then, then they say, well, it's because society won't accept them. That's why they're suicidal. And something else to toss in here. Look, when you are involved in a sinful activity that you know is not right and your conscience is convicting you, but, I mean, you don't want to get caught. And the last thing you want to do is admit that you're engaged in it. Think about how difficult it is for most alcoholics to say, I'm an alcoholic. It's the same kind of thing. Am I, am I on the right track, George? Yes. I know we are, we are short on time, but if they really knew and understood the lies from many within the medical community and the agenda saying that you can tr- change your gender, you can't. And if it was true, why are so many people speaking out crime. There are some who aren't even religious who are on YouTube warning this changed to nothing. And now they have a whole onslaught of other problems, especially from botched surgery, infections, and just the toll that the shots and the hormones and all of that stuff has been taking on their body. Not to mention the females who had their internal organs removed who now live with the regret that they can never have a child now that they long to be a mother or the young men who realize I removed my penis and they're now have other issues that they're having to deal with as a result. It's sad and it's tragic and it's sickening that there are Christians who would support a Democrat party whose policies are pushing this sick, twisted agenda. I'm not saying the Republican party is any better, but they're not pushing the agenda the way that the Democrat party is. They're actually trying to, to some degree, stop this. And worse yet, there are church communities that are, welcoming this and promoting it as well. I, I want to shift back to to the topic specifically, though, of, of the homosexuality issue, that particular issue. Milo Yiannopoulos, Yiannopoulos uh, was on my program last month, and as you know, he has renounced, uh, he celebrated, as a matter of fact, put a video out celebrating one year of what he calls straightness, and uh, he has been straight for a year. He has renounced being gay, and he has given his life back to Christ, and it's the real deal. And I'm so proud of him. And I've been praying for him yep. for a number of years. That being said, he makes this statement, George, you are not born gay. Can you speak to that? Correct. It's another lie that they push, and I started to believe it, but I know that we're all born into a sin nature, and we don't know that if it's not from being molested, raped, abuse, trauma, or even a generational curse. And and the Christians will understand that if they know God's word. But if you get to the root core issues of what is driving the behavior, and especially allow, come to know Christ, which allows the Holy Spirit to start working in your life, the transformation will come and the renewing of the mind will happen. And that doesn't necessarily mean that every LGBT individual is ready to come out and then live a straight life. Remember, for many of us, when we come out of that life, we are so broken and there's so much baggage. But yes, God will do the healing, and he's been doing it in my own life. And maybe down the road I might get married, but for now, I don't have this desire to sleep with men or women. God has taken that grip away. I really just enjoyed my relationship with God and walking on this journey with him and getting to know him because I had such a skewed version of who, of who God really was. I didn't know that he loved me and that he cared about me. So be patient with these individuals because, again, so many people are broken and hurting. But God will do the work. And there's a difference between loving someone and then basically saying, I don't just condone, but but I support your behavior. And that is in part where, you're, George, you're saying Christians have got to stop saying that behaving in this manner is okay. Yes, because when you affirm, let's take it from the transgender issue. When you start affirming their preferred pronouns and whatever preferred name they now want to be called, you are allowing them to move further into a delusional fantasy that is not even reality. And God is not going to stand there on Judgment Day and put up with their pronoun crap. It's, he's going to get really real with these people. And he formed us in the womb. He, just, he does not make mistakes. 
And so I know one trans male friend of mine, and she said what really burned her up is that her mother would never call her by her preferred male name. But she said it kept her tethered to reality because she just wouldn't do it. So when you affirm this, you are affirming a mental illness. Because, and I'm not making light of this, I can't even imagine what so many of these individuals are going through, but with the right kind of counseling, and especially with the work of the Holy Spirit in their life, the goal is not to fix them first, the goal is to get them to hopefully come to Christ first, and then God will do the work in their life. The bigger issue is we don't want these individuals to die and go to hell, but at the same time, we must speak the truth of God's word to them in love, and let them know there is hope. We don't say to the alcoholic, hey, uh, I affirm your alcoholism, or the drug addict, I, I'm going to affirm your, your drug addiction, or pornography, or lying, or sex addiction, or even anger management. We call those things and we say, hey, wait, you know what? Those are not good. And not only are they not good because of the outward effect that they have maybe on those around them, but Ultimately, they're not good because of the destructiveness that they are within the life of that individual. And yet, LGBTQ, and I, and I want to go now very quickly to this Pride Month because Pride Month also is Pride Celebration and they have Pride Parades. Talk about what they're exhibiting at these pride parades. And remember, you have to be careful on on terrestrial radio. But talk a little bit about what it is that's happening at a pride parade. When you go to a pride parade, it's almost as if the whole freaky side of that world is on display. So instead of seeing the young men or women dressed in polo shirts and jeans and they look respectful and, and presentable, you see the lesbians on the motorbike. Some may be bearing their breasts, wearing the leather. And you got the guys who are in the thongs gyrating on the float. It's adult-oriented. It's just filth on display. That's the only way I can say it without really getting into any other details. And I'm surprised that even in Los Angeles at the West Hollywood Parade, I was dumbfounded by the number of parents who would bring their kids to these events or these little boys dressed as girls twerking on the street. It's so dis disgusting and sickening. I want Christians to know that there are fair-minded gays and lesbians within that community who are disgusted by it as well. They want the children to be left alone. These children deserve to have their innocence for as long as they can. They want the agenda removed from the public school system. These young kids should not be learning about this. So understand that even within the community, there is a lot of divisiveness and turmoil and frustration with this issue. Even the lesbians are really fed up with the whole trans female issue because it's really dominating women's sports and it's really kind of taking away women's spaces, so to speak. But even if they speak out, they will be called transphobic. So even within the community, they are turning on each other. So it's really sad and unfortunate what's happening with this agenda. Well, and the indoctrination of children in our public schools. Now, I want to go back to something else, too, and, and that is uh, and, and there's a different way. Well, they call it chicken. Uh, and I, I want to yeah. talk a little bit about that when we get back and, and, and the pickup and the partner kind of thing. Because I want to, again, I want folks to understand that the homosexual lifestyle was birthed out of sexual addiction to a sexual perversion. That's how it was birthed. That's the real truth about Stonewall. That's the real truth about what happened there. And when we as Christians are, are, are supporting this, uh, you, you would never say to someone who has cancer, don't seek treatment. Uh, there's no way to help you and encourage them to watch the cancer eat up their bodies. Not when you have the elixir, when you have the answer. We'll be back with more right after this. Did you know you can do your tithing and love offering right from your computer? Visit www.pastorgregyoung.org to support Chosen Generation and make a tax-deductible donation. Now, back to Chosen Generation with Pastor Greg. And welcome back to Chosen Generation Radio, where no topics off limits, everything filtered through biblical glasses. My guest is George Carneal from Queer to Christ. George, give us the website, and then uh, I want to hit those uh, a couple of quick topics before we close out the show. 
Okay, my website is www.georgecarneal at C A R N as in Nancy E A L dot com. And you'll see an email address and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. George Carneal, C A R N E A L dot com. And George is also available, by the way, to come and speak to your group. If you have a, a group that you would like him to talk to about this issue, if, uh, if your church is having questions about how to, how to resolve, how to handle this, how to reach out to the homosexual community, George is an incredible resource. And I would encourage you. Uh, to reach out to him and invite him to come and speak at your group. George, there's an indoctrination of children. I've briefly mentioned it uh, at public schools. And, and what, well, folks, what you need to understand is, is the comprehensive sex education program, which I, I can't even, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to tell you today all of what is in that and what it is teaching your children in public school in that environment. But but it is grooming them, it is grooming them to become victims of pedophilia. How significant is pedophilia in the homosexual uh, community, and, and why are they so quick to push back on that? It is significant, but it's also in the heterosexual community as well. I know that there is a push with NAMBLA, which is the North American Man-Boy Love Association, and other groups, but even the media, I'm starting to see them just start grooming our society to accept lowering the age of consent to maybe 12 or 13 or 14 years old. So men and women who are adults can have sex with these children. So understand that if you support a party and their policy, which push this, don't complain when your children and your grandchildren come home one day and an adult has had sex with them because they're going to change the laws eventually. And they'll put the P, which stands for pedophilia, even polygamy and polyamory. They're going to throw that under the umbrella. And then if you dare to criticize it, you will be prosecuted for hate speech because that will be the eventual end goal. They're already doing it in other countries. And the sex abuse, the child sex abuse issue child sex trafficking which uh, a lot of us are hearing about now is something too that that they don't acknowledge when someone comes out i I mean look ellen degeneres for years said nope i was never a victim of that it was it was about i don't know what five or ten years into her career at least before she finally said yes I was the victim of sex abuse. It, it is a major factor in this, and it is a hidden secret, and it is so important. The bottom line here is we have people that are hurting, people that are believing lies, and we want to share with them the truth and the love of Christ to change their lives for eternity. We'll be back with more tomorrow on Children's Generation Radio. Remember, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, when I stand before my God, I do not want him to ask me, what did you do with the world that I sent my son to die for and redeem? How did you fight the good fight to share the good news and keep evil in check? How did you shine your light and be a beacon of truth in the darkness? Did you shrink back in fear when they demanded you change my message? Did you call evil good and good evil? Did you forsake my love for that of another? lying with the adulterer and setting up a new idol in your life? Have you defiled yourself through compromise and tolerance of that which I call an abomination? Have you innocent blood on your hands for the children murdered on your watch and the young ones perverted in their way by evil men, seeking their own comfort and reviling me? No. At the end of the day, I want him to simply say the evidence is in. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I love my God, and I love his creation, and I will go to my grave telling the world that evil is evil, and only God is good, and Jesus came to save the world, that no matter the evil in the world, I will never give up, and in spite of the hate, I will love in truth. God bless you all, and may love remove the veil, so you all might enter into his rest.